Hello everyone, welcome back. So this time we're going to be looking at what's a more realistic example of our um, transformation equations. So what you have right here, this is a strain rosette. It's used to find the principal strains um, in a single test. So you'll put this on the free surface of a machine part, you'll measure the strain in each of these, and from that and the known angles in between them, you can actually solve for your principal strains. So using these numbers right here for the strains in each of the strain gauges, as well as our Poisson's ratio, let's go ahead and try this out. So first off, this isn't hard. This is one of those kind of plug and chug things, but there is some algebra. So we're going to take our strain transformation equation and we're going to salt plug in the strain we know and then everything we don't know into this equation. So we know the angles. If we don't know the strain in the x direction, the y, or our shear strain. However, luckily for us, we have three equations and three unknowns. So we can solve this. Um, as a note here, this is the kind of, you know, streamlined version of the transformation equation I gave you. I left you with the one that's closer to Mohr's circle so that you have that direct connection. However, you can simplify it like this and you can look in your book to see exactly how they do it. Or just write it down. <laughs> Put it on the equation sheet and forget where it came from. Okay, so once you do this, we can start solving. So from equation A, we can solve and say, okay, well, I've got 550 microstrains is my strain in the x direction. For equation C, I get, well, my strain in the y direction is going to be negative 375 microstrains. And then to put, using both of those, I can solve for the shear strain. And I get that it's negative 1,635 microradians. So I have all of these now. Um, and once I have them, I can go ahead and get my principal strains. But I want to take a moment. If you're not good at algebra, you might want to learn how to use the matrix applications in your calculator. If you've got a graphing calculator, it can usually do matrices and solve systems equations very, very quickly. So once you know how to do that, go ahead and use it. It is, it is amazing. Okay. Now, principal strain, principal stresses, it's literally just plug and chug, okay? You just plug and chug. And so we get, in the end, we're going to get, okay, we plug it in. This is going to be our average normal strain. And right here, this will be the radius of Mohr circle. And what we find then is that our average is going to be 87.5 microstrains. And then we're going to have a radius of 939.262 microstrains. So from that we get our principal strains of being principal strain 1 being 1027 microstrains, principal strain 2 being negative 852, this being our max in plane shear strain. And then to find the angle we use everything we just calculated a little bit earlier and plug it into this equation. Um, and we get that's going to be equal to 30.25 degrees, which is going to be clockwise from the x-axis to this direction. Now, here's the thing. All of this is just kind of plugging and chugging. But remember, if you've forgotten, that this right here, this equation right here, is how we're building more circle. And so what we're seeing here is, you know, it's a very, very small average strain. It's like right here. And a very, very large max shear strain something like up here and so it, we have a very big circle not a very good one right here but um, we can see that and then what we realize is the direction to our principal our max strain um, is we're going to have to change it so we had a positive x to begin with okay and we had a negative y and we could plot those figure out where they're going to be on this and then we would have to rotate by that angle so there is a nice graphical tool here to solve um, these problems and to kind of see what's going on. Like This is all the strain states that are possible on these lines, these combinations. Um, so I know there's lots of plugging and chugging, but remember there is a graphical, visual, nice way of looking at it as well. And hopefully that makes it a little bit more sense. Okay. So... Now we can show this on a sketch. So the big thing we're doing here is we're just saying, okay, this was the X and Y axis. We rotated by 30.25 degrees. 
and then we have this nice rectangle which got all stretched out. So once it got stretched out, um, it was 1,027 microstrains along one corner, 852 microstrains along the second corner, which is squishing it in, which makes it this oblong diamond shape. And then the angle right here, this angle, is going to be pi over 2 minus our shear strain. Pi over 2 minus our shear strain, because remember, shear strain is a change in the angle. So that used to be 90 degrees, like this bullet box, is no longer 90 degrees, so never that severe. And so with that, it has changed shape, and so this is 90 degrees right here, more or less, and this is the change in the angle. Okay, so strain readings were taken from the free surface of machine part. So this is a plain stress um, position. However, just because it's plain stress where sigma z is equal to zero does not mean that there is no principal strain. This one is not equal to zero. And we can compute it from our equations which we've seen earlier. So we use, we find our strain in the z direction by saying, okay, well the strain in the x and the y, they're going to cause or the stress and the x and the y are going to cause these strains because of Poisson's ratio that's going to cause a strain in the z direction. If we plug it in we get okay this is going to be negative 75 microstrains. And so from that that means that our max in plane shear strain is equal to our max absolute shear strain. If this had been more negative than negative 375 we would have used this to calculate our max uh, absolute maximum shear strain. But since it's in between these two, then this is already taken into account, the maximum. Sorry, um, our previous shear stress was the maximum. Okay, so with that, I believe that's everything. So thank you for listening. Have an absolutely wonderful day, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.